Hello and welcome. So I received a question from one of our subscribers or request rather, and he was asking that we do some cases. And I actually think it's a great idea because I think the best and the most efficient way really to learn medicine is to solve these cases. And these are the type of situations that you're going to find yourself in clinically. It's not always about simply being able to recall facts and details and tiny little things. You have to be able to put the whole picture together to be able to solve a case. So one case that I found particularly interesting and that we should go ahead and have a look at is this case of a young man with shortness of breath. So here it is in front of us. It's the case of a 25 year old male who complains of increasing shortness of breath fatigue, palpitations, and ankle edema that have progressively worsened over the past two weeks following a severe upper respiratory tract infection. So automatically we're thinking here that this kind of sounds like heart failure, the increasing shortness of breath, the palpitations, and the ankle edema. These are, these are symptoms that are from a cardiac origin. But what makes it interesting is this guy is 25 years old. So you wouldn't expect heart failure, or not so often would you come across a case of heart failure in a 25-year-old male. But there must be some cause. It states that it's been happening over the past two weeks, and the symptoms started after a severe upper respiratory tract infection. So straight away we're thinking of some infectious sort of organism that is causing a heart failure. So the physical examination shows an elevated JVP. It shows pitting edema, fine respiratory or fine inspiratory crepitations bilaterally, and mild hepatosplenomegaly. Again, our physical examination findings are adding to our suspicion of heart failure. So we do some lab work, and the CBC comes back to show lymphocytosis. So lymphocytosis, you're thinking of viral, viral sort of cause. And in our lab work, we also had an ASO titer done. What is an ASO? An ASO is your anti-streptolysin O antibodies. When do you do this test? Or what is this ASO? What does it really mean? Well, this ASO, you do it um, if you suspect a patient has had a streptococcal infection. For example, your group A strep and your group A strep cause rheumatic fever. Strep pyogenes, it causes rheumatic fever. And remember your rheumatic fever, it causes all of the symptoms that this person is having. So it causes your, car your carditis. It also causes a rash, um, nodules, Sydenham's career, which you would see after a while. So when you have a young person who's presenting with these sort of symptoms after an upper respiratory tract infection, you start thinking of um, group A strep, rheumatic fever. But in this case, his ASO titers are normal, which for the huge majority of people, when an ASO titer is normal, it pretty much rules out the chances of a streptococcal infection. But there are cases when that ASL title will be normal and then you have rheumatic fever occurring anyway, but it kind of gets a little bit confusing. So just remember for the majority of people, ASL title is normal, it rules out rheumatic fever. But bear in mind that's not how you diagnose rheumatic fever. You actually diagnose rheumatic fever by using the Jones criteria. Okay? So you have to have several symptoms present. And the Jones criteria is divided into your major and minor. So you have to have a few of the majors. I think it's like two majors and one minor. Or two minors and a positive ASO. And that gives you a diagnosis of rheumatic fever. But in this case, the ASO titers are normal. So that's pretty much putting rheumatic fever and group A strep out of the picture. So now we should start thinking about other things which could possibly cause 
this um, heart failure that's occurring in this relatively young man, 25 years old. He is a young man. So what could possibly be causing this um, cardiac failure? So his ECG shows first degree AV block and it shows elevated ESR. ESR is your erythrocyte sedimentation rate and it's a non-specific marker for inflammation. So after we do this, we go ahead and do a chest x-ray. It shows cardiomegaly, it shows pulmonary edema, and then we do an echo. It shows dilated cardiomyopathy with low ejection fraction. So straight away you're thinking towards Coxsackie B virus. And the thing to bear in mind with Coxsackie B virus it is the most often implicated cause of viral myocarditis. So everything in this case is pointing towards Coxsackie B virus, viral myocarditis caused by Coxsackie B virus. And in this case, they went ahead and did an endomyocardial biopsy, which showed diffuse infiltration by mononuclear cells, mostly lymphocytes. And the fact that we're seeing on our CBC lymphocytosis and then the infiltration by lymphocytes, again, is pointing towards um, viral cause. And the most often implicated cause, is a cause of viral myocarditis is your Coxsackie B virus. So in terms of um, a differential, even though Coxsackie B is your most likely diagnosis. There are non-viral causes that can cause myocarditis, which include bacteria, for example, Borrelia burgdorferi, which causes your Lyme disease. This can also cause myocarditis. Then you have parasites, such as Trypanosoma cruzi, which causes your Chagas disease in South America. So if you're in South America, that could be one of your differentials. And then you also have diseases such as your SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, um, as well as sarcoidosis, which can also cause uh, idiopathic giant cell myocarditis. So what would we do to get a solid diagnosis? Well, you test for antibodies versus Coxsackie B virus. So anti-Coxsackie B antibodies. If those are positive in your blood, then that's a definitive diagnosis right there. So what about a treatment or management plan? Well, in terms of treatment and management, it's all about, it all revolves around managing the congestive heart failure that it's causing, controlling arrhythmias, and if you have one of those rare cases where it goes on to to complete heart failure and the heart doesn't recover, the body's immune responses aren't able to overcome the virus and the heart fails completely, then in those cases, you're going to have to undergo a cardiac transplant. So that's pretty much for this case. It's pretty straightforward. There's, there's really not that much to it, but it's all about connecting the dots and being able to really have a look at the broader picture and understand the all these things have to tie together. It's not about simple factual recall. So I'm going to be making more of these cases every now and again, and I hope you guys find it helpful. So if you have anything that you'd like to add to this to the discussion, by all means, post a comment below or drop me a message. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.